UX for ERP Summit, first time um, for Mindset in 2023. And uh, I'm super happy uh, being part of this conversation and talking about the digital transformation uh, with uh, you know, this user experience. Uh, and we will talk more about what we have done uh, internally plus uh, you know, what we are helping our customers to, um, you know, to do the digital user experience part. Um, so just a little history of uh, you know, SAP BTP. I don't know like, uh, if anyone uh, heard about BTP. It's just a matter of like past two years or less than two years. But it, it was originally you know, you know, founded, or maybe let's say uh, first version was called out back in 2012 as an SAP NetWeaver Cloud. So, and after that, it was renamed to HANA um, Cloud Platform back in 2013. It's a decade ago. And then in 2017, um, there's a goodbye to um, name SAP HANA, sorry, HANA in the uh, platform as a service offering. And, uh, and the official product was named as SAP Cloud Platform. And now it is um, BTP Business Technology Platform. And SAP is very good in rebranding the names and uh, you know, past decade, um, there are several names been changed. Um, so overall, um, when we say digital transformation, how it gonna happen? Like how, how the digital transformation will, uh, will arise into SAP technology, right? So um, overall, like in BTP offerings, we have like 94 services as of day to day, which are available. Um, and out of 94, the top 25 in each five different categories, like develop, um, integrate, plan and analyze, data, and AI. So these are the five key pillars of the SAP BTP, business technology platform. And uh, out of these five um, um, key pillars, like the, the services which are um, showing up here, like you know, those are the um, top five, uh, top 25 services which are every line of business is uh, making use of it and they want to um, prove their use case into these services. So one of the things which we want to, um, you know, uh, we want to talk about how these sites and mobile apps, which is the part of the develop, um, and develop pillar and uh, uh, how the SAP build work zone uh, helps the digital transformation. Welcome, guys. So, Employees uh, across, uh, you know, they are they're disconnected to get their work done, right? So, you know, like they have their bookmarks, all these, every, every employee has their own bookmarks stored on um, their browsers. Like, for example, for my training, I have to fix my laptop, where I have to reach out, and, uh, you know, my marketing results and uh, my team revenue, book travel, like all these are different bookmarks which are stored. Um, in their personal browser, and uh, for ex and and also into the system silos, um, benefits provider, ticket asset management, expenses, like pretty much all are like different spots where an employee goes into and get their work done. And how um, uh, how, how to get all this into a single user experience is what the ultimatum is. Um, I don't want to you know go for a particular activity for one website and go another activity for another website or another uh, activity to complete it for another screen and stuff like that, right? So instead, we want to get all this as a central user experience and how it's possible. So what SAP is released is the um, SAP build, uh, I call it as a BAD, uh, which is like for B for build and A for automation and D for design. Um, so it's not official name of SAP, but it is uh, the way of, uh, <laughs> it's not bad, but it is, it's a good product. So. Um, so, um, uh, or else, like I should call CAD uh, for compose at automation and design. Um, so, what are we, uh, what are, what are we trying to do? With this, like you know, uh, as Samian was talking about more on the user thinking, how how it was been transformed from old classic tools to how uh, how it is looking right now is is what we're going to show here. So. All the key features, we will talk in detail about the work zone, what exactly work zone is. And uh, let's just take an example of, uh, you know, hey, I want to do uh, an employee onboarding. And uh, from, the, uh, from the application side till an automation of workflows, then a design. So all these three things will really help any sort of an application 
to build and and uh, you can build visually uh, which integrates smoothly and they collaborate effectively right so these are the key three components of sap build and uh, <coughs> uh, it would it, it wouldn't be great if you if you can build an app create an app um, you know where uh, where you can integrate um, automate the build process and uh, build a business side without writing a code without writing a single line of code like what we say is like low code no code um, for this in order to build an application so the build applications the build apps will really help to drag and drop functionality to get all the um, fields and get a better user experience stuff and then integrate the workflows into uh, into your applications like the auto automation of workflows you can done in the SAP, SAP build process automation which is the new rebranding of, um, of SAP IRPA in the past so IRPA with uh, workflow management is now is called as SAP business process automation so LCP build work zone that's the key uh, thing which we will cover in detail and we will go both in technical wise and as well as uh, very high level of uh, how it looks like and stuff. So the build work zone, what it does is, uh, we'll, we'll go to the next steps. <coughs> so um, as you have seen in the past slide, uh, you know we have different silos of uh, getting all the things done. We have a lot of activities, a lot of bookmarks stored in our sites, right? So I want to get my work done, so I want to link all my applications together. So I want to make my job easy and I want to execute my task easily, um, receive reports, um, you know, exchange information easily, and all these things in a mobile base. Like it's a simple, easy process. So what exactly and what are the types of uh, build work zone? And again, uh, we talk about, you have seen in almost like past 10 years, Fiori Launchpad, um, which is now called as the SAP build work zone, a standard edition. And uh, an advanced edition, uh, like it was called as a, like build work zone previously, it was, now it is, in a, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, in the past it was like SAP work zone, now it is called as SAP build work zone. So <clears throat> advanced edition. So here are the like, different uh, screenshots, the way it looks like is just a tile based, um, you know, you won't see any, um, any, any knowledge management, knowledge based information kind of content, but you will see only the respective uh, applications on, as, a, as a form of tiles. And uh, whereas the work zone, which looks like a, a business site, it is a business site. So which has a lot, lot of knowledge management content and uh, collaborate information uh, to your team along with the, uh, along with the fear. So everything is SAP. So the, the standard edition versus the uh, advanced edition. So it's like new uh, horizon uh, branding theming, which is, uh, uh, which is available right now and uh, like a lot of uh, drag and drop functionalities. Like you don't need to do any coding for to get this business site. It is so easy drag and drop functionality with SAP build. So there are a couple of uh, workspaces which we have built internally for our own day-to-day uh, -day activities. Like I'm from Amazon Technology Pre-Sales. I would like to have my own site where I can, you know, talk to my boss regularly and explain about, hey, these are the, um, you know, uh, RFPs which are pending. These are the proposed leads which are turned as an opportunities and uh, how I closely get connected is what we store as like, you know, um, pre-sales management workspace and uh, the combination of all these standard applications plus uh, the, uh, you know, the um, knowledge, manage, knowledge based information. So. Um, you can design, like, you know, there's a template where you can just click on edit and you can customize, drag and drop the wizards. Uh, you can inject UI cards. You can, um, you know, uh, um, add uh, feeds to it. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination of all of those things where you can expand and uh, get this design done. So what was there in the past, right? So SAP Enterprise Portals was there, SAP Jam. I don't know whether you guys heard about it, but... Um, what, what, what happens to those things in the near future? So SAP is strongly recommending, you know, um, the, the maintenance will end for, you know, in the next four years for sure, and the extension of their maintenance will be continuing until 2030, but the, every customer was still sitting on their portals old school, like they have to do their transformation to the uh, BTP. And similarly with the cloud. These are the like two old user interfaces. I started my career when the portal was there. Um, back in 2004, um, you know, with, with SAP itself, like, you know, I was a key player on the um, uh, building the knowledge management collaboration and portal 
um, designs for employee self services and manager self services. Um, so I, I remember this, all the screens and stuff. So now it's like you know a great transformation being done with the Fiori, and uh, it's not only just Fiori parts. Like now we are mo we are talking about the business technology platform, which is uh, beyond Fiori, right? So. Um, let's let's talk. Uh, let's hear about uh, from CHS. You know how they have uh, transformed their uh, you know from uh, from SAP to to the uh, SAP Build Work Zone. Over to you. Okay. Thanks, Joseph. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Radha Krishna. Uh, I'm working as a Fiori UAX lead in CHS from last three years. Um, so before uh, we go into the detail of our build work joint topic. So I would like to go through uh, a little bit about our company, uh, CHS. Uh, so we are a leading uh, global agribusiness, and we are owned by farmers, ranchers, and uh, cooperatives across the United States. Uh, and we are diversified into energy, agribusiness, and crop nutrition, and food. And we are committed to creating connections to empower agriculture across the world uh, to, to our owners, for, uh, mainly basically our owners are farmers, so farmer owners and cooperatives. So we have uh, more than 10,000 employees uh, across the globe, and we are operating uh, in around 19 countries. So we are creating connections to empower agriculture uh, by the core values, uh, integrity, safety, inclusion and cooperative spirit. So these are the main business services, businesses and services. What we do, uh, the main core is agronomy. We provide uh, agronomy solutions to the farmers and crop inputs uh, for the uh, better uh, crop growing products and then energy. In, within energy, we have uh, multiple areas, refined fuels, propane, lubricants, and uh, renewable fuels, and energy equipments. And we also do global grain processing. Uh, we have plants where we get the crop from the farmers, and we will uh, process grains. And then some uh, financial services. OK, so coming to our build work zone, uh, so what is our current challenges right now what we have, right? So in our current landscape, we have uh, on-premise system and cloud-based uh, solutions as well. So on-premise, we have S4, MDZ, and GTS. And on cloud side, we have uh, Conquer, SuccessFactors, and we are going to IBP and Fieldless as well, right? So the access point of view, uh, right now we cannot integrate everything together on a single launch pad because on-premise and cloud are two different things, right? So we cannot integrate both together onto on-premise. Right now we have a central launch pad, but we can only access S4, MDZ, and GTS. But IBP and all cloud solutions we cannot access on, into central launch pad because it is on-premise system, right? And multiple logins. So if user wants to log in, like if a user wants to log into the IBP system, and he needs to log into a different browser. And then if you want to log into S4 or MDZ, he needs to log in into a different browser. And upgrade issues. So if you want to upgrade any system, so we cannot upgrade because S4 is our central hub, and MDZ and GTS are down the line. So if you want to upgrade MDZ system, we cannot do that because S4 is our hub. Right, so we need to do the S4 first, then we will do MDZ and GTS. And at the same time, downtime. If you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, if S4 is down, so we cannot access the down system. So because S4 is on the top, so we cannot access the GTS MDZ systems if S4 is down. Right, so those are the challenges currently we have in our landscape. Right, so then, so. So what is the solution we found? So the solution what we found is SAP Build Work Zone, right? So SAP Build Work Zone, it enables organizations to establish a unified point of access, whether it is S4 system or cloud-based system, 
and third party applications and whatever uh, applications you want to access, you can access at a single uh, entry point, which is nothing but SAP build workshop. So now let's go back to this slide. So that's our current state. If you see uh, the end user, so he will access, if, uh, if you want to access S4, he will access S4. And then for all our cloud products, if he want to access, he, want, he needs to access it individually, right? So you need to log into the, if you want to do something, uh, travel expenses, if you want to claim, he will log into the Conquer system. If you want to do some procurement, so he will log into the Ariba system, right? So same way, success factors. If you want to do some trainings, so he will log into the success factors individually, not at a single place, right? So that's where uh, this build work zone helps. So this is our future state, what we are planning to do. So recently we did a POC on build work zone successfully. So this is our future state. So the build work zone will be the central point of access for all the users, right? So we will integrate all the cloud-based solutions and on-premise systems. And if we want to build any custom applications on top of BTP platform, so we can do that as well, and non-SAP applications. So we are bringing all together into a common platform with cloud-based solution, which SAP is offering. That is nothing but SAP build workshop. Any questions? Yes, we, yeah, so we do, yeah, we are using Azure AD as IDP. Sorry? Azure AD. Azure AD. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come to that. So we, that's part of POC, yeah. Yeah, just, just uh, you know, on this slide, right, you know, like the user is logging into six different portals or, or else six different um, screens for to do their, his own day-to-day -day activities or maybe like weekly activity stuff, right? So. Still, like S4 HANA, SAP Conquer, like cloud technologies, not on-prem technologies, like even though SAP's use, end user is still using that, but from end user perspective, what uh, the central user experience point of view, um, logging in one single site, having all the tiles showing up is the beauty of the, you know, um, uh, of the build work zone. So just want to highlight on that note. Please go ahead. So one question. Yeah, sure. SAP, which one? Non-SAP, non-SAP, no, in the, as part of POC, we didn't do that, no, just SAP, yeah. Yeah, but it provides the capabilities to integrate non-SAP applications, applications as well, yeah. um, but the beauty of this is, you know, we don't want user to again go to, you know, hey, this is not SAP, go ahead and do the stuff uh, in another screen, right? So, you know, the central point here is, you know, to have the user to be staying on the same screen to finish his activities, like, you know, be SAP applications, non-SAP applications as well. Uh, a few slides ago, probably actually further towards the end, you mentioned cards. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you'll get Yeah, we'll, we'll, we have those slides in upcoming, um, so we'll show you. Yeah, you bet. Um, we'll show you that end as well, yeah. Is it a plan to use it as a productivity platform for bringing in email, et cetera, as part of your uh, page, or is it just mainly focused on kind of could be used, for example, yeah, work there are two, yeah, tasks, yes, we can, yeah, so I got your point, the you there, or you so there are two versions in build work zone, standard edition will have only access to the applications, and the advanced version, so that's, you can integrate all your Outlook, Teams, channels, and you can create the, uh, the previous slides, one of the slides, spaces, right, so you can create the web spaces, and then where you can integrate uh, all across the corporate level, whatever you want to uh, bring into it, so you can bring into advanced version. Okay. Yeah. So is these capabilities are there? Capabilities are there in advanced version, yeah. The one, what we are trying is the standard version, that's only for uh, applications itself, not for the other like Teams, Outlook and all. So on your slides, you mainly have SAP S4 HANA. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the beauty of this build work zone, irrespective of the uh, S4 or ECC versions, so you can able to connect. Yeah. One question, these equipments, right? Uh, first of all, you like your GPS and MDG, probably uh, not, not an S4 on a big control. Did 
you have to set up a, a launch pad and then uh, what is your kind of setup and can you directly connect G, uh, workflow to a system yeah, or we you have to create your gateway correct to create your launch pad in each of those systems and then connect it to yeah so we we do have those slides upcoming so uh, we covered that as well so like we'll go a little bit deep dive on the technical how to accomplish that and uh, we will show that as well so yeah. so you don't need a gateway uh, officially because the launchpad can be able to connect to, through the cloud connector uh, to the back end systems that's that's if you can see here so these two are our s4 systems and gts is not an s4 it is uh, i'm not sure about the version of it but yeah so so you can directly able to connect with the cloud connectors. Okay. So you don't need a gateway for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the POC what we did uh, in CHS. Um, so we took uh, S4 on-premise system, and then uh, IBP is our cloud-based solution. So we integrated these two systems uh, to the build work zone. So on the top uh, right side, the end user, so directly he can launch the build work zone. So there is a connectivity service. By default, uh, uh, build work zone will, um, in BTP platform, we have the default connectivity service where you can connect directly to the cloud solutions. And then for on-premise systems, there will be a cloud connector. So where you can connect through the cloud connector to the BTP. And then uh, here comes uh, your answer, sir. So there is uh, IAS service they're providing uh, for all the B2B products. So from IAS, you can integrate to your corporate IDP. For example, Azure AD. So we are uh, connected through Azure AD. Yeah. And now SAP even rebranded that, um, you know, IAS, IPS into uh, cloud identity services, a CIS. So with a combination of like both IAS and IPS in one simple user experience. So uh, that's another yeah. thing. So yeah. it's similar to in S4, uh, GRC, if you're using GRC. So in the cloud, if you go for BDP, there is a solution called uh, IA, IAZ and IPS, I believe. Yeah, so IAZ, IAZ can be used as your GRC for BDP. We didn't try it POC, but we have. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For Ariba. We'll go to next. Uh, so now Joseph will go through the steps, what we uh, did uh, during this configuration of these steps. So we'll go into a deep dive on, um, you know, like which will answer your question, your question as well, like on the. Uh, process of uh, getting this authentication, how do users get provision, and first of all, like how to build works or not, like how to build my business site, right? So um, if, if, if anyone is like into technical or basis, like you might be knowing very well of like all these steps, but I just want to give you on a very high level uh, how to accomplish it. So these are the prerequisites, you know, uh, if you're having a BTP account, you should be having your sub account set up, uh, you know, in order to have all the uh, entitlements to be activated first, and then, for example, standard edition and advanced edition. So these are the entitlements which are available on the sub-account level, not on the global account. Um, and then you're subscribing to our identity service, um, creating a trust between your uh, you know, IAS and sub-account, and plus uh, you're creating your own work zone groups in IAS. So, uh, like you know, for uh, um, by default, it, like SAP provides a default ident IDP, which is you know S by using SAP uh, SU user IDs to authenticate. Uh, it's also possible. It is. It's not like you know only uh, source of uh, corporate IDP, but uh, SAP does provides um, you know customer IDP as well, where they can uh, like for Azure Active Directory. So those th those are things which they, they can. Uh, provision users from there to uh, to IAS so that the users can uh, u use um, um, you know corporate email accounts instead of SAP as user IDs. And uh, the next step is like more of the booster. So what it does is it's an automation process of all creating uh, you know subscription, getting instance, and your cloud foundry environment enablement, plus the uh, roles, role collections, and creating its destinations. So 
else, like, you know, you can also create this uh, entire step like manually, unless or until if you know what, what should be the entitlements, what kind of an instance should be created, and, uh, you know, how, uh, how to enable the Cloud Foundry. If you are not aware of that, then you can just unclick off, uh, you know, Booster, so it will automatically create all those steps, and it's ready to go. So it's like the service is there in the BTP, your environment is there, so you have uh, your global account, and you have sub account created, and all these things are properly set. Then uh, just activate. I mean, running the booster will tell you the, uh, will automate all the process, and you're ready to um, go for the uh, configuration wise. And the perform configurator piece, where uh, you know that's where you start working on the uh, SAP build work zone advanced edition. So you start deploying, designing, and uh, deploying your applications and deploying your um, you know, like when, when I say applications, it's not only just tiles, but we want to have some knowledge content be, beyond it. Like, you know, hey, this application, how to activate it? Might be you need some guided procedure of how this app works. So you can have that knowledge management content showing up, and uh, which helps a guided procedure of how app works, some, maybe some test scripts or something like that. So all these things can be possible and uh, with the work zone. So with the Fiori, as you have seen, um, it's just applications, right? So uh, Fiori Launchpad or um, Launchpad as a service or build works on standardization is just a bunch of tiles from different backend systems. But whereas the advanced edition talks about, you know, um, with backend, backend, uh, different backend systems as well, plus its respective knowledge management. So knowledge-based information. So let's, um, let's talk about um, very deep dive into the technical, um, you know, how, how to activate, um, how can I, you know, how can I, my, my journey starts in the uh, advanced edition, how to enable services, like, you know, if you're not aware of, we will quickly walk you through the steps. Um, so uh, every organization will, you know, once they are uh, procured license with the BTP, they have their global account set up, and uh, you will be creating a sub account, and uh, that sub account acts as a system, like for example, like sandbox, or development, or quality and production systems. The sub account um, holds the entitlements, like list of all the services, like I, as I mentioned, the 95, 94 services as of day to day. So all the services in under BTP, you can activate based on your business case, based on your scenarios. So in this case, we talk about we will we'll go through about you know how we have activated the standard edition and uh, you know just clicking on the instance and subscriptions and you will see uh, you know a new instance where you start selecting and uh, by you have to choose like you know SAP Bill Works on standard edition and uh, the the entitlement will show up uh, under the instance and subscription and it is subscribed and it is ready to go for uh, for for the for the next configuration steps. So we have enabled the service. Now we have to build the structure of it. Like we have to build the skeleton. Like you know, we have to feed information and, on, and you know, connecting your, um, you know, your backend system to uh, to show your applications on top. So how to achieve that, right? So uh, first of all, we need to create a site. The site is like you know, just to have a, a you know, plain uh, structure to see all the applications and. Uh, just just uh, side properties of uh, what it looks like and how it looks like. <clears throat> Can you go back? Uh, yeah, sorry. There are some go ahead. Features uh, here, um, the new features like pages and spaces. So that if you want to enable, so there is a, a configuration here, and if you want to enable the mobile start, uh, it's a it's a nice feature in work zone. So that also will be available here at the at the configuration settings. It's a this business. Is how I start my day. Yes. CHS as a whatever you. And yeah. This this would be that beginning the, place from which then I would launch into whatever work stream uh, is my priority for that. Uh, absolutely, so right? Like, I mean, I'm I'm lo I'm logging into only one single, um, you know, site. my uh, my page, you know, where I have I don't want to do my uh, right. conquer time traveling for for other website logging into right. So my user ID is logged in with a single sign-on, and uh, you know I'm, I'm logging into the Build Zone Advanced Edition, which is Build Work Zone Advanced Edition, where I have all the applications, plus my content, plus uh, you know it could be SAP, it could be non-SAP. So I have consolidated all together into one simple site, into one simple business site, and then you know I can finish off my day-to-day -day tasks. So, so conceptually, this equates to what some companies would call an intranet 
I mean, there again, you know, it's it's all old school. I would say, you know, for 14 years back, 15 years back, where SAP has this enterprise portal, knowledge management, collaboration. So it's the same thing with the digital transformation is what we see, uh, with but more of mobile. Uh, you know, but you're right. You know, it has all my self services activities listed out, and uh, I'm not going anywhere. But that is only specific to my user interface of like portal stuff. But this is like more of user experience. Like I need what I need is what I'm getting it here. So I don't want to go beyond uh, other activities. For example, I'm as Samian has showed one of his example as like steering is the user experience, right? So that is user interface where it has a lot of controls, but I'm not using them. Like I I, I only need steering maybe on off. Yeah. So just simple. Exactly. So uh, ir irrespective, I have all those controls available for me, but I'm not using it. The same concept is user experience, right? So user experience is like, you know, what you see is what you get. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's like poof. <laughs> so um, and uh, it's a, like VisiWig editor is what we call, and what you see is what you, what you get. It's just, you know, the controls which you are used to and the roles which are assigned, only those activities will be accomplished here. Okay. I have, I have, I have some other questions. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, we'll we, we'll finish up and then we'll open up for Q and A, uh, so that you know um, you might you might you might have a question which is in my next slide. So that's what I'm trying to uh, cover the topics first, and then uh, I'll open for Q and A. Okay. So you want to cover this? Yeah. So this slide is basically how you integrate the applications to the business uh, site, right? So once you create the business site, the you can do in two ways. Either you can do manually, like if you know about the Fury Launchpad, how we configure the tiles, like groups, uh, catalogs, and groups, the same way we can configure manually into the site, business site, what we created earlier. Otherwise, uh, there's a uh, content federation option where you can automate it. So wh whatever the backend system, you create the roles, all the tiles can automatically federate it to your uh, BTP uh, uh, build work zone. So there are two choices. Uh, of course, the manual integ manual integration will be, uh, uh, it takes longer time. Like it's a duplicate because you do on the back end side and you do on the BTP side. So the preferred approach is the content federation. Um, there are a couple of uh, integration steps needed for this, but yeah, so the preferred is content federation automatically. To the question you asked, right? I mean, um, like, you know, how we can expose? Do we need to have an on-prem again gateway to have our Fiori tiles exposing to the uh, BTP side, right? So, what we what we have to use is the cloud connector setup. The cloud connector will be installed in your on-premise landscape, the customer on-premise landscape, where it is connected to the backend. So the backend data is exposed through cloud connector to BTP. If it is on-prem, if it is cloud-based, like you know, for example, in uh, at CHS architecture, the, uh, you guys have seen the IBP, which is a cloud-based supply chain solution, and that is connected through a, 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 it's a cloud in identity. Inbuilt service. Yeah. yeah, so inbuilt service. So these are all the services which uh, you know gives uh, features to BTP, where you can expose the data from different sources. Okay, so um, one of the destinations which we talk, right? I mean, you know, how how secure is my data, and how I'm exposing my content to BTP to the cloud technology, right? So, one of the thing is like, you know, what we call as a destinations is destinations we have to define in BTP sub accounts where where, uh, where you can see this cockpit uh, under under destinations. You will define the the system name, the RFC um, connection or HTTP connections, and the system details. So this is now connect, going to your cloud connector and to your S4 HANA or ECC or you know in, in any other system, any other backend system. And uh, you, through that, uh, you'll have the data flow connection establishment done. And this is one other, another connection where uh, the IBP connection details has been provided here as it is a cloud-based. You'll have all the URL like and its respective uh, service user account where uh, you know the, 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 the data is communicating. Uh, one point which I would like to highlight here is the authentication. If you see the authentication here and here, like there are two different things. Like the principal propagation is where the single sign-on, um, you know, from um, where we are using a corporate IDP, 
uh, to connect to um, to build words on. Whereas here, like you know, the, the service account which is using is you know BAS underscore connect for the uh, for the IBP solution. So it is using all the credentials has been maintained in the destinations itself, so that you know one single user disconnected and uh, getting into the launch pad. Again, it's a just the same screen with the details of uh, um, you know destinations and its properties. Um, and the content channels, like this is, as you can see, the content provider, like, you know, wh what are the information uh, we have defined, and all the content channels will show on the content management of uh, SAP BTP itself. And yes, like, you know, how, now the connection established. We have enabled the services, we have enabled the sub accounts, we have uh, uh, discussed about, you know, multiple SAP backend systems and one cloud based solution cloud-based system as well, like now, how my roles will be exposed. So uh, we have a transaction code called like CDM3 underscore EXP underscore scope. So using that uh, transaction code, you can define that, you know, hey, I want to expose uh, one of my um, uh, standard role um, to, uh, to, to the cloud, to the BTP side. So uh, you can define um, as many business roles you want to expose and all the content will be published to, uh, I mean, all the content will be printed directly to, from S4 to BTP side. Yeah, this is from IBP, same way. Uh, so there's in IBP itself, there is a uh, option to federate the content. Uh, so you can create the communication systems uh, from IBP to the BTP, and you can federate the content from IBP. Yeah, so this is where all the, this is okay. This is click jacking. Yeah. So click jacking is another key thing where uh, you know, hi, I want to protect. I want to make sure you know my site is secure. Um, so this is one one way where uh, you know we avoid vulnerable related stuff coming into our site. So um, you know, SAP security, uh, sorry, BTP security plays a key role. Like, what are the uh, you know uh, vulnerable stuff coming in? Uh, right. So how secure is my uh, my my business side, right? So SAP has uh, some standard um, standard certified uh, security tunnels, which are you know, uh, which are way way protective than uh, any other thing. So, but in, still, like if 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 something which uh, you know customer wants to avoid, uh, so you can still customize and define those uh, click jacking protection stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about a use case where CHS uh, you know uh, deeply involved in. Okay. Yeah, so as I said before the POC, uh, we took uh, S4 and IBP. Uh, we have a user where he operates in both the systems, S4 and IBP. Uh, from S4, uh, he takes the stock. Inventory planner we have and uh, inventory processor, uh, the roles. So the inventory planner, what he does is, uh, the inventory processor, what he does is, uh, in the S4 system, he checks the, on a regular basis, he checks the stock and stock transfer between the plan and goods movement, all these day-to-day -day activities he does from S4 system. And from IBP, he will plan the inventory, right? So the planning of inventory will be done in the IBP system. So he will create the inventory profiles, analytic charts, and all the design charts related to the inventory planning. He does it in IBP system. So, so what we did, uh, next slide, yeah. So. We identified the roles uh, from the S4 system. So these are the roles. Uh, we have inventory processor role and inventory viewer role in S4. And then we have uh, IBP inventory planner in the IBP system, right? So we federated these roles into our uh, work, build work zone. And from IBP, we federated this inventory planner role into the work zone. Yeah, so this is the previous one. We discussed the Expo Scope transaction where you can automate the content to the BTP platform. And then this is the one where you can expose the content from IBP to uh, BTP. Uh, you guys might ask a question here, like, you know, wh what is this role about? You know, what does it contain, right? So technically, uh, the role contains the catalogs and groups to it. So n number of groups and number of catalogs to it. So all the Fiori tiles, all Fiori related applications are stored in the role. So the, those ex, uh, those security roles, like all this BR, uh, which are called as like SAP business roles. So those are the roles which contains a list, uh, you know set of all uh, you know n number of applications. And with single role, which is still sitting in your on-prem system, 
I'm exposing that role through a transaction called EXP scope, sorry, CDM3 underscore EXP scope, exposing that custom custom security role into my BTP site. So that is how you know you are and you are pushing all your catalogs and groups to to the cloud. So as you can see, like now we got the role here on the BTP screen, and uh, you know now based on the user, uh, you know, hey, this guy has to be an inventory planner. So assign that role only to that specific user. So we don't want to again give uh, you know SAP all plus all the business roles where again the launchpad is stuffed with you know uh, f uh, like lot of uh, query applications, right? So instead we are just giving okay, he's an inventory planner. He needs just three tiles. Poof, and then you give one single role, and then he's good to go. So. Right. And yes. Now, are you saying that at the BTP level or build workflow level, you sort of have another layer? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that is, we are talking about on-prem versus on-cloud, okay. right? So on-prem roles will satisfy the needs of the user who are, like, let's say, we have you guys have an embedded gateway or maybe a central level gateway, and you want to you assign a user uh, with with some set of applications. So that business role will be helpful, right? Now that role, is, if it, that contains all the list of all the applications which needs to be uh, on BTP side, you can expose this role to the cloud directly, and uh, that the same. I mean, it's the same role where uh, you know it is pushed to BTP. Can you go back to the one more yeah. slide? Uh, on mid roles are there? Yeah. Here, if you see this uh, roles, so these roles are uh, came from the backend system. Sorry, so these roles will be assigned to the site what you created in the build work zone. And the same roles needs to be assigned to the users within the BTP platform. Yeah, I was just trying to see if there is, so there is another, I guess it's looking at the effort, right? So yeah, the effort, the effort is, effort. yeah. So the, okay. what we are planning to do is we are planning to integrate the roles with the corporate IDP itself. So when the corporate ID, through, uh, when the user onboards, so the roles will be uh, automatically assigned. So if we define the roles, what roles needs to be assigned, the back end and the front end on the BTP, so those, those can be assigned. Yeah. So really, you're, you're relying almost exclusively on the governance, the role and identity governance built into the SAP foundation rather than, say, security groups in Active Directory, Azure Active Directory. Is there a correlation? There are different scenarios and use cases, right? So what, for example, this is one of the option where you know, hey, I want, I'm my, I have set up my SOX compliance, everything set properly as per my security guidelines. These are the roles which are ready to go. That's one option. Like you know, and I'm taking another scenario where I don't have, like you, you tell me, you know, and where that comes to like IAS and IPS, which is like provisioning and as well as authentication. So that I default identity provider, which puts all the roles to the uh, to the BTP side. So there are like the multiple different use cases where the you matrix. can, yeah, it's a matrix, you know. Like based on uh, my level of security, uh, you know, how should I I make sure that users are getting the right roles to it? Right? So that's, that's one thing. Sure. Yeah, sure. we'll okay. just wrap up in like Some this is the last next uh, last two slides. Um, the long story short, you know, when end user logs in, this is how it looks like. I, this is called SAP standard edition of the work zone and uh, like old name as the Fiori Launchpad. Um, but you know, each tab has a, a different set of tiles which is coming from a different backend system. One could be a on-prem, one could be a cloud. For, for, from, from CHS perspective, so the planning base is general planner. These are coming from the uh, you know, uh, IBP system, which is a cloud-based supply chain system, and inventory processing from S4, okay? So we are bringing all the uh, Fiori application for uh, you know for the let's say um, rather user is doing and he's is just sitting in this screen and is finishing his responsibilities. And one last is I would like to highlight here is you know yours I, I I mentioned as like you know, mobile based you know how mobile based right so we have SAP Fiori client which SAP deprecated that maintenance. Now what we call as SAP Mobile Start. So just by clicking on uh, settings on the any Fiori um, work zone, sorry, build work zone, uh, you know, and just uh, you know scan the QR code, 
where you can register and directly launch the application. And this is how it looks like. Uh, you know, the SAP you need to download from SAP store, uh, sorry, app, app store, uh, iOS store, and uh, sorry, Google store. And then uh, the applications, whatever you have seen in the BTP, you'll be able to see on your mobile devices and uh, finish your tasks. So quick benefits of CHS got, you know, their upgrades can been taken care of by SAP, so there is no downtime. That's a business challenge which they had that's been avoided, and the zero downtime for patches and upgrades. Their SLA is like 99.95%, where it's uh, with a very, very, uh, very, very minimal downtime where it can accomplish that. And uh, mobile start, as I just showed you, and there's no dependency of any other backend system. So, it's, so yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you very much with the time constraints. I know we are uh, uh, like bottom of the hour, so if there are any couple of questions, uh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, feel free to. I have, I have lots of questions. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to chat. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to chat all those questions and answer, uh, you know, uh, how to get this done, how to accomplish, what are the challenges we faced when we're setting up internally, and, uh, you know, we, we, will, we can talk definitely, like, you know, in detail, so there's no doubt about it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, guys.